company. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the testimony that proceeds from this pulpit, from this altar, from this church. We thank you for the things that you do in our lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, breathe upon your people once again this morning. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, last week we started a discussion and a conversation around how to pray for a breakthrough. Uh, we talked about several things. We talked about a lot of things, actually. Um, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from the teachings. Um, you know, um, um, some people, you know, anyway, I just, I just got a lot of feedback. And I believe that it was something that was very helpful. And he answered the questions in the hearts of many people. And today what we want to do is just extend that thought a bit further. Uh, because we really want to take our time to also thank God and praise him uh, today. Praise the Lord. And so we want to extend the thought a bit further and try and deal with some of the things that we probably haven't dealt with when it comes to the hindrances and the things that block uh, answered prayers in the lives of believers, right? Because everybody prays, right? Hindus pray, Muslims pray, Christians pray, pray. Uh, Shintoists pray, uh, 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 you know, uh, everybody prays, right? But very few people get result. In fact, some people have then made a resolve that the only reason why we pray is for meditation and for peace. In other words, we use prayer as a way of, um, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, you know, so for some people, prayer is like yoga. Amen? It's just, <sighs> Praise the Lord. But prayer is more than that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Prayer is more than that. Because if God knows that prayer doesn't work, for him to ask us to pray and do something that he knows does not work, then he's a wicked God. But the God that we serve is not wicked. How many of you believe that? All right. The Bible says, you know, he is good, he is kind, he is the epitome of love. Praise God. All right. So Isaiah chapter 38 from verse 1, uh, we'll start reading from there. The Bible says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, set thine house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Ezekiah turned his face towards the Lord and prayed unto uh, uh, the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, remember, O Lord, I beseech you how I walked, blah, I, you know, and said all these things. But the, my, my emphasis here, right, is the fact that the moment news came to Ezekiah that was not pleasant as far as he was concerned, the first thing he did was not to call a committee. The first thing he did was not to, uh, uh, you know, look for uh, a pity party. The first thing he did, the Bible says, was that he turned his face to the wall. That means, or that is representative of going private, glory to God. When you turn your face to the wall, when you tell a child that go and face the wall, right? What are you telling that child? You are telling that child, go and stay by yourself, seclude yourself from where everybody is, and think about what you have done. Am I right? I mean, I mean, do we tell your children, we just flog, or we tell them to go to the wall, all right? So, you're, you're telling that child something. So, Ezekiah did something symbolic, right? He, he, he moved away from the crowd, the same way Jesus, from time to time, in the word of God, the Bible says he will withdraw himself and go to a solitary place so that he could pray. Ezekiah understood that the God that I serve is good and kind, and there is nothing good that he will withhold from me, and so when I I turn my face to him to pray, I know that he will answer me. So one of the first things I want to say to you today is how many of you here have confidence in the prayer that you are praying? Hezekiah was so confident that he could go and approach God. Many of us are praying, and the reason why for some people, right, it seems like there is a delay. For some people, it seems like their prayers are not answered. is because even the prayer that they are praying, there is no confidence in the prayer. There is no confidence in the prayer. The Bible says in James chapter 5 verse 16 that we read, it says the effectual, heartfelt prayer. So, when, when, when prayer is not heartfelt, the reason why many times is because people lack confidence in their own prayer. That's why it's not heartfelt. That's why it doesn't come from their heart. Because they, are not, they don't believe that what they are saying out of their lips will come to pass. And that's one of the first things you must deal with as a believer. Prayer is not an activity. Prayer is designed to be effective. Prayer is not for you to just say, I have prayed. Prayer is not a box that you check. 
Prayer is something that you engage in because you believe in it. Some people pray just so that when they ask them, that have you prayed, they can say yes. That can't be the reason for prayer. You must be praying because you know that he is a God that answers prayers. He says, unto him that answers prayers shall what? Shall all flesh come. So why we pray is because we know that he has promised to answer. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So why is it that people experience delays in their prayer, right? We gave a number of reasons uh, uh, last week. We talked about process. We talked about capacity issues. We talked about the fact that some people are just too inconsistent to see results and all those types of things. And, you know, we may repeat some of those things, but I want to go, you know, take it a step further and share with you more things that I believe uh, will help you uh, uh, in, in this journey. So let's start. Uh, um, James chapter 4 from verse 1. James chapter 4 from verse 1. All right. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why there are delays in prayers is because people have the wrong motives. People have the wrong motives. The Bible says, from whence comes wars and fighting among you, come they not even of your lost that war in your members. In other words, the reason why wars and fighting comes is because there are certain things you desire on your inside that are not right. Anything you desire that leads you to fight cannot be God. That leads you to hurt another human being. I don't know if I'm making sense this morning. Are you seeing this scripture? Because it says that where do wars and fightings come? The reason why people are beefing one another. The reason why there is hate. Is because there is something that belongs to somebody else that I desire. That's covetousness. That's what he's talking about. The reason why is that the first time I read this scripture, especially when you get to verse 3, I thought that God was against me having a personal desire. In other words, if I wanted a car, that God was against it. But I remember that what things you desire when you pray. Believe that you shall read. I mean, does anybody, does you understand what I'm saying? Until I read this thing very well, and that's why it's important to read in context. What he was talking about is not that what you desire a car or you desire a house. Those things are lovely. What he's talking about is the motive for desiring those things. In other words, you want a car only because you know that where you live, the boys will not allow you to bring that girl into the room. So you want to be doing your business in the car. <clears throat> Is it too early? It's too early. Okay, let me retract. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? You want a child just so you can show your enemies. Pepe. Slay. You, you, is, that's what brings fighting. That's why people go to Instagram and they cannot rest. Because the beef they have for that person is more than one cow. Selfish motives. The reason why some of you don't know what you want until your neighbor has it. So what is your motive? You just want to level up. That's all. Praise the Lord. You just, that's what you want. You are not interested in the car because your boss, you are fine. But the moment your neighbor has a car, now you are under pressure. You now want to transfer that pressure to God. I say, Holy Father. Selfish motive. There's nothing wrong with wanting a car for yourself to go to work, come back home, move around. There's nothing wrong with that. God enjoys all those types of things. But when your motive has been corrupted, that's what he's talking about, lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people just want to do, they just want to disobey. See, as far as I was concerned, as far as I'm concerned, Eve just wanted to try God. He said, oh, bye, God, bye, bye, calm down. He said, we can't eat anything. Why is it the one that they say you cannot eat? That's the one your eye is going. That's lost, praise the Lord. And the Bible talks about the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Am I right? And it does lost. The one they say you should not touch, that's the one you want to touch. Selfish motives. Glory to God. And what happens is this, when you are selfish, your ability to walk in faith is difficult. Why? Faith walketh by love. Because your motive is not for a motive of love, you can't walk in faith. So you'll be doing the activity of prayer, but you will never see the results. 
Because the engine room from where the prayer is coming from, which is our heart, the engine room is corrupted. So the smoke, akabalaba shatter. When you see a generator that is pouring out smoke, it is the engine that determines the type of smoke that comes out. If the engine is clean, you will see clean smoke. If the engine is corrupted, you will see corrupt smoke. So, because our prayer, the Bible says, let it be like a fragrance. Abi? So, when the engine room producing the prayer is corrupted, kabayasa. Terrible fragrance. It is smell. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Why are there delays in prayer? Because people are inconsistent. They are hot today, cold tomorrow. They are inconsistent. Today you want something. Tomorrow you want something else. Very inconsistent. Today you are loving God. Next tomorrow something has happened. Pastor Balaji always says it. Never let a tragedy change your theology. See, one of the things you must know is this. Listen, everybody please look up here. If you are the kind of person that is trusting, that you really want a fantastic Christian relationship, there are certain things you must believe fundamentally. No matter what happens, those things never shake. There are certain... Oh, listen, let me tell you something. Except you want me to lie to you. Otherwise, your Christianity will not work. Why? Certain things will defy logic. Certain things will happen in your life. You wonder, God, are you there? But there are certain things you must con agree in your life. Number one, God is faithful. Listen, it does not matter what happens. God is faithful. If anybody drops dead today, God forbid, God is faithful. Paul said, even if an angel comes to teach to you something else that is different. He said, even if it's me that comes and teaches to you something different. He said, there are certain things that does not change. God, Jesus came, he died, he rose from the dead for our justification. God is faithful. You know why? Because when you don't, when you are not sure, certain things will happen that will shake you. Certain things will happen that will move you. And why are people, why do people experience delays in prayer, right? Sometimes the reason why we are not consistent is because of the number three reason that I'm going to give you. Why people are, experience delays in prayer. And that's in Deuteronomy 29, 29. You know what the answer is? We don't know. You know what that means? I cannot give you all the reasons why your prayers are delayed. You know why? I am not Jehovah. So I don't try to be El Shaddai so that I shall not die. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So listen, sometimes your prayers are delayed. Why? I don't know. If the angel did not tell Daniel that the reason why your prayer was delayed was because I was fighting somebody, you know Daniel will never know. Are, are you aware? He will never know. So in other words, Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that there are secret things that belong only to God. The reason why is that the day we know everything, we have become Jehovah. So the reality is this. Eh? See, eh, let me tell you. My disposition as a child of God is this. I may not be able to explain everything. And sometimes I don't even need to exp explain everything. I just need to know God. You know why? The Bible says there is a peace that passes all understanding, including your own understanding. See, eh? you don't know what happens when you are going through something and there is peace in your heart. Has it ever happened to you before? Everybody else is making noise. Like, what will you do? What will you do? You, you are not bothered. Do you know what's going on? You don't know. You can't explain it, but you can explain somebody, the God that you serve. Listen, that's why if your Christianity is a transaction, you will suffer a lot. Do you hear what I said? You will suffer. The Christians that suffer the most are the ones that think God is an ATM machine. Holy Ghost. Okay, what's the code of the Spirit? Bang, 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 bang. Holy Ghost, bring out the money. Holy Ghost, bring out the money. Ah, they say I should command, I've commanded. They say, you see, that's what happens. When you're in a relationship, in a relationship, they can tell you that, oh, today's zone is not by commando, it's by something else. There are some estates you go to that they have a daily code. If you don't have the code for that day, you can't enter. Am I, do, do you understand? So what that means is this, and listen, eh, it is relationship that gives you access to that code, not effort. It's because you know somebody in the estate, or you know somebody in the security team that gives you access to that code so that you can enter that estate. Not because you can pray, not because you can fast, not because you drive a G-Wagon, because with your G-Wagon they will turn you back. 
I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, what gets us many things in the realm of the spirit is relationship with God. See, we can come here and teach you principles, but beyond the principles, we know the principle. Because the principle makes all the principles work. I don't know if I'm making sense this morning. So, I'm saying this to you so that you know that your faith will not rest in the wisdom of men. It rests in God. You know, this week, I was having a conversation in the office. And we were talking about how Christians say, it is well a lot, it is well a lot. And somebody said, but you know that that song was actually composed out of somebody's misery. And we said, oh yeah, that's true. Because what happened was, this particular guy, I mean, there are different variations of the story. But the guy that composed the song, what happened? He, he, there, was, there was a Chicago fire in his business. He was a successful lawyer and a real estate person. So there was a fire, and the fire burnt the whole of his business. So, while after that happened, his only son, he had five children, four girls, one boy. His only son now died of sickness. So, out of all that tragedy, he sent his wife and four daughters to London by boat while he was still around, you know, sorting things out. That he would go and join them. While they were going, there was a shipwreck. The four daughters died. So, when he now entered the boat to go and meet his wife, that was remaining, the captain of the ship showed him that this is the spot where the shipwreck happened and where your children sank. And it was from there that he said, when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows... That's where the song came from. But you know why I talk about it? Because that guy knew that beyond all these things, we are more than conquerors. Job said, though he slay me, he says, yet will I trust him? But when your relationship is a transaction, what will happen? God, you killed my son. I'm not worshiping again. Then your fourth daughter is now that. Ah! So the one you took is not enough. Ah, you are dead. I'm coming for you in heaven. Somebody say hallelujah. So sometimes the reality is this. We don't know. But we trust. We trust. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust that. You know why? Because if you're looking for do me, I do you. Uh, you miss God. Far. You are, you are far. You are far. So when we wake up in the morning and we go for next level prayers, it's not just about the prayer point. It's about the relationship. Yes, Glory to God. So, how do you pray for a breakthrough? How do you pray for a breakthrough? We talked about a lot of things last week. We talked about having specific prayers that are backed up by the word. We talked about believing. We talked about being consistent. One of the things we talked about is being sensitive, recognizing the way God answers our prayers. See, eh, some of you don't recognize how God answers prayers. And that is the problem. You think, eh, you think that God gives many of the things that you are praying about. Lord, I want a car. God doesn't give cars. He gives you the ability to get the car. So he can talk to somebody to give it to you. Or, which is the one that many people don't like, he gives you grace to save, to buy it for yourself. You don't know that that's answer prayer. You know why? Some people earn money and put it in holes. The fact that you can earn money, have some to save so that you can buy your car, is grace, so... Why? There's something called Devora. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Devora no, does not have to be Satan. It can be a sick child. Yes, sir. A sick cousin. That all your money, that's where it's going. I don't know if you understand. Yes, it's not their fault that they are sick. I'm just using that word to describe something. So I'm not being insensitive. Amen. I'm just using the word to describe something. Anything that takes away from you. There is a sickness that you are nursing. That every month you need to pay 100k to survive. So, the fact that you can save, right, is answered prayers. Praise the Lord. But some of us don't recognize that. Recently, the federal government just released a law, right? If you're in Nigeria, you, know, you, you probably would know this. And if you don't know, you know. The federal government just released a law that if you're a pension person, meaning you contribute to pension. How many of you have seen that press release? If you contribute to pension, right, you can use out of your pension as deposit to buy a house. Some of you don't know that that's answer prayer. Because the money your employer has been paying into your pension now, when you check it, it's like 50 million. And the house you want to buy is like 25. 
All of a sudden, that change in policy has answered somebody's prayer. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. God answers prayers in diverse ways. But the challenge is many of us put him in a box. You need to be sensitive enough to say, Lord, open my eyes to see the answer to my prayer. Some of you, the answer to your prayer is a relationship that is in your life. All you need to do is ask that person one question. Other things will open up. See, and many times when people say they are delayed, they are not really delayed. They're just not seeing where God is answering. Because they want him to come in a particular way. And you can't put God in a box. He is almighty. Do you know what that means? I, I say everything, mighty, everything, all mighty. Glory to God. So God gives you the raw material so that you can get whatever it is that you want to get. It is he that giveth you power to do what? Get wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, Deuteronomy 8.18, because it is he that giveth you what? Power to do what? Get the wealth. He doesn't give you the wealth. He gives you the power so that you can get it. How do you pray for a breakthrough? Right? Uh, so the, the prayer must be heartfelt. The prayer must be heartfelt. We talked about that. Any prayer that does not touch you cannot touch God. In other words, do you really want this thing? Is this heartfelt? Glory to God. I said glory to God. The kind of prayer that God answers are prayers that are based on the word. Righteousness based prayers. <laughs> hey. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in what? Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but what? But what? After the spirit. Listen, eh? there is a certain level of knowledge that you must have when you are coming and approaching God in the place of prayer. You must know that, listen, eh? God wants to answer you. You must know that you are righteous. Glory to God. You must know we have been justified by grace. Hallelujah. Who is he that can say a thing when the Lord has not said it? Who is he that can command when the Lord has not commanded? Glory to God. What everything we have received, we have received by grace. That's why I said that no man should boast. It's not by us, it's by God. So, recognizing the finished work of Christ is important in prayer. Sometimes you, you hear us at NLP say, we stand upon the integrity of the word. What are we trying to do? See, beyond the fact that we are also praying, we are also trying to help you understand the basis for which we are coming for answered prayer. It's so that you can understand that there is something called the integrity of the word of God that does not fail by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. So, when you go to God in prayer, you go understanding that, listen, this prayer has been done. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So your prayer must be backed by understanding who you are in Christ, right? And what your level, what your access in Christ gives you. Oh, glory to Jesus. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you pray, do you pray from a place of victory? Hey. Or do you play, pray from a place of begging? Say, God, please. God, please. Now beg, I they beg you. Now beg, I know even Shakara again. All my posing, I'm no more posing. God, help. Help your boy. Or do you come confident in Christ? Lord, I know that you will not withhold anything from me. Thank you because you make all things available for me. You have given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Bible says you dear children are of God and overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even my faith. Is that how you come to pray? Or you see yourself as a victim? No, you are not a victim. You are a victor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In every way, in every phase, in every stage of life, you are a victorious person. Glory to God. That is your nature. That is who you are. You are not
not the one that things don't work for. No, all things work together for my good. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Anywhere I step into, I step into victory. I step into promotion. I step into the right places at the right time. I'm doing the right thing with the right people at every point in time. Why? I'm blessed. I can't help it. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Anyone that judges your blessing by your appearance is making a big mistake. Why? I'm 10,000 times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. I am manifesting what I am on the inside. Just give me time. JB, you want to see? Calm down. You will see, you oversee, will worry you. Calm down. It, who they used to bring wife for? Does not used to do like this. Calm down. It's coming. You say, Yoruba proverb. I just. Uh, converted. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So, how do you pray for a breakthrough? How do you pray for a breakthrough? Listen, maintain an attitude of joy and thanksgiving. An attitude of joy and thanksgiving. I don't know if I showed you this scripture last week. Jo Joel chapter 1 verse 12. It says, everything is withered. Why is it withered? Because joy has withered from the hearts of men. So, I came to a conclusion. It's not because things are not working that you are sad. It's because you are sad that nothing is working. Why? There is a way sadness makes you observe only the things that are not working. So that you can compile and buttress the reason for your sadness. I don't know if I'm making sense. So, you, you, you think that things are not working because... And you know, you know this way, the way this life is, eh? It's very, very small things that give you, that annoy you the most. The smallest things. You wake up in the morning, you now have a flat tire. Who I vent? Who do I offend? Do you understand what I'm saying? Very, very small things. You know, maybe, you know, somebody was just driving and they splashed you water. Hey, your mood, the whole day, you are finished. Just very small things. Things that sometimes when you look back on, you're like, oh boy, what did they do me, sir? Am I okay? Glory to God. It says, the vine is dried up, the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree, these are all trees that normally produce. The apple tree, even all the trees are in the field that withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. When you see people that are not thankful, they are not joyful. Joy and thanksgiving go together. Hallelujah. Joy and thanksgiving do what? They go together. Glory to God. So, when you want to, when you are thanking God, right, create an image in your mind of answered prayers. Create an image in your mind of answered prayer. In other words, this, and this is why praying specific prayers are important. So that you understand what the answer to that prayer looks like. Okay, you are believing God for a breakthrough. What is the definition of a breakthrough? When it comes, what will you look like? Glory to God. When a breakthrough shows up, what's, what does that look like for you? Hallelujah. What, what is the image? Because, you know, the reason why many of us cannot be thankful is because we don't even know what we're trusting God for. We don't really know like that. We don't, we're just like, you know, Lord, God, just do it. Just do, God, just do something. God, just do something. Thanksgiving and joy, these are critical components of prayer. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In other words, after you have prayed, you need that joy to keep you going until you see the manifestation. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, eh? and you know what? Thanksgiving, because I, I always put the two together. Thanksgiving is the only thing you can do before and after prayer. When your prayer has been answered, you don't need confession again. You don't need consistency again. You don't need any of those things. But before your prayer is answered, you need to give thanks. Even after your prayer is answered, what? You need to give thanks. Jesus, before he multiplied the five loaves and two fish, Father, I thank you. Before he raised Lazarus, Father, I thank you. Those lepers, after they were healed, God, thank you. Thank you is the only thing you can do before and after manifestation. That's why God put it there. Rejoice. Again, I say unto you, rejoice. 
So when we are thankful, right, what we're trying to do is create an atmosphere where the miraculous can happen. You know, one of the fallacies that I used to t believe was that the more moody you looked, the more people will ask you what is wrong with you and the more they can help you. It's a lie. How many of you have received help like that before? Very few. Very few. You know why? It's a law. To him that has, more will be given. To him that does not, even the little that he has. You know why? See, eh? listen, have you ever seen that? Have you ever gone to the house of a rich person and you see the kind of gifts they bring for the person? You'll be like, ah. <laughs> You'll be like, wait. See, when the richer the person is, the more thoughtful you are in giving them a gift. So, why? Whatever you have, you attract more of it. So when you have joy, you attract more joyful things. I, it took me a while to understand it. So I stopped being angry. Because some of you wake up in the morning, the first person that receives it is your driver. Where, where have you been? Papa is just there two minutes late. Where, where have you been? Do you know how late I am? But you still get to the office early. Calm down. Calm down. The Bible says that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. How? Giving glory to God. If you want to improve your strength in believing God, give, give, give thanks. I'm telling you. If you want to improve your strength in believing God, be more, be more conscious of your ability. See, let me tell you something. Here. Grateful people are conscious of certain things more than some other things. And let me say, yeah, because I just noticed that when you are in the office and you are oozing joy, the work flows. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The thing just flows. Your relationship with people flow. People want to favor somebody that flows. Not somebody that is a joy sucker. That's why it does not work that you now be looking moody. Nobody will invite you for lunch. Yes, Do you want to go for lunch with somebody that is moody? No, your mood will change. Why? One rotten apple in the midst of good ones will rot in all the other apple. So you take the apple out. You say, guys, you did not even call me. They can't call you. You say, sorry, we, we, just, we just went. No, they didn't just went. If you are a joyful person, they'll come and look for you. You say, my God, I better come. There's sadness in this place. Come and help our ministry. But they know you, chief complaining officer. Any small thing, you're angry. Any small thing, you're upset. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are even angry for, you are drinking Panadol for other people's headache. You are more angry than the people that should be angry. You watch a football match, your team loses, you are angry. I said, do they even know your name? Do they even know your name? No, because, see, let me tell you something then. And some of us can be very passionate, right? Because, and I'm talking because sometimes I can be a very passionate football fan. In fact, they don't know this in my office. So one day when I, they heard me talk about football, they said, hey, you know about this? Sir? They say, yeah, yeah. we just decided to calm down. Why? Because the thing was getting too much. If my team loses like this, I'm depressed. I'll just be walking around and say, what kind of team is this now? <laughs> they now had, the last two seasons have been very bad for them. So then they lose, passe, passe. So joy, they go, passe, passe. I say, night life. Like, like, I don't do it again. Every umbilical cord, I cut it now. <laughs> why, why am I saying this? You must identify where your joy is being taken from and restore it back. Some of you, the reason why your day goes on a terrible tra trajectory is because you start it at a particular point. Change it. Change it from that point. Glory to God. Somebody comes to the office and greets you. Good morning. You say, what's good about the morning? Must you be an evil spirit? <laughs> Must you be an evil spirit? Joy. Thanksgiving. Let it ooze from you. It takes nothing for a candle to light another candle. Yes, sir. Nothing. The light becomes brighter. Yes, Glory to God. And I've said this to you before. You have no right to take away someone else's joy because of your own sadness. You have no right. If he's doing you too much, step aside and pray in tongues until joy comes back. And I'm telling you, these are practical things I do. 
I just get out of the office, walk. Everything causing me depression. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Why? There is an attitude I must maintain. I see some of you think you are doing it for other people. You are doing it for yourself. I'm telling you. Because you find out that you are healthier. Life is easier for you. You find out that things just happen. If I when they happen, you too will be surprised. Eh? Now I saw God, they do them. Why? Joy. Thanksgiving. Joy. Thanksgiving. Glory to God. And anywhere there is joy, there's dancing. Praise the Lord. There's, that, that's why we dance in church. Because I know some of you come to church and you are looking like the Holy Ghost. Why are they dancing now? What are, what are they dancing? See the way this one dancing now. See the way this one dancing. Are you assistant Holy Spirit? Are you the judgment king? Let people dance. Why? Everybody expresses joy the way they feel it. Glory to God. You can talk about anything. See, when something happens for me, you cannot dictate how I thank people, how I celebrate. You, you don't have the right. You know, the other day they were talking about a footballer and how every time the footballer scores, he's always dancing. And that dance is annoying some people. And I'm like, hey... As in, the guy is not dancing any provocative dance. So he's dancing Brazilian, Brazilian dance, you know. He's just moving and dancing. And people are angry. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Are you a sadist? As long as the guy is not offending any, he's not doing anything offensive. He's dancing, he's not disrespecting you in his dance. It's not his dance. Do you know what it takes to score? Go and score. <laughs> Maybe you are beefing. Go and score now. So when I give praise to my God, and somebody is beefing my dance. Ah, go and collect your own. When you collect your own, don't dance. But me, when I collect my own, hey, hey, oh, Shemila, no, hey, Makologo, if you like, be angry. It does not change the anu that I've received. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. 